And we're back with On the Record with Tiffany, and I'm here for my third segment with one of my favorite people, Dr. William Henrich, the president and CEO of UT Health. So I want to talk to you about something that we've been seeing a lot in the headlines, and that is um, social injustice as it relates to health care. So the, when people are talking about that, they're talking about algorithms and how that affects uh, whether or not a person is chosen for a transplant and a myriad of other things. Can you explain to our listeners what that means? Because sometimes I think people get confused and they think it means that the doctors and everybody's out to, to do something to cer certain people groups, to African Americans or to Hispanic people. And that's just not the case. An algorithm is completely different from, what, from a physician trying to uh, make a decision. Let me take a swing at it, uh, <laughs> and then you can uh, get me back on track if I, if I get off the rails. Well, the, the public good means the general public. It means everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody counts. That's right. So the general conclusion about why there are health disparities among individuals with lower socioeconomic mm -hmm. level in our society is built around the general concept of a lack of access. Mm -hmm. Part of it's educational, but it's a lack of access to care. And that's lots of things, right? That, that's that's a lot of things. It's, it's uh, well, it's not having a computer. Right. It's not having uh, a it's personal- It's transportation. It's transportation. Cell device. It's being, it's the need to ride three buses to get to somebody's office. Exactly. It's, or to get to fresh food. Uh, or to get to good food. <laughs> or, to, yeah. or to even get, to have the money to uh, to buy fresh food exactly. versus what you could buy. You know, the, the, I'm not telling you anything that is going to surprise you or anybody listening to this, but the I'm amazed at the advertisements about fast food on TV, two Whoppers for five bucks, and yeah. and and with fries and a Coke. Dr. Hendricks, when I weighed 340 pounds, I was a person eating two Whoppers. I, I don't touch Whoppers now, but I but it's funny that you would say that because well, it's that food that is we're literally with our mouth we're killing ourselves with our teeth. So the so there is a whole array of things that follow from the wrong foods, the wrong, not having access, but they're related to money. Mm -hmm. uh, they're related to uh, uh, just having the ability to talk to somebody who can get them, get people the right information. So we're part of the, we're part of the effort to increase awareness about this and to create more sites in different parts of our city to get people closer to where they need to be to get the access they need. And we have a, a, a number of programs which have targeted specific groups to do this. Can I mention just one? Yes. Go so ahead. just one is that in Hispanic culture, there's not only this barrier of money in some parts of the Hispanic mm -hmm. culture, just a barrier of money, but people don't, um, in essence, they don't fully trust someone who isn't from that, mm -hmm. from that culture. Right. I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. Nobody does. And so uh, we've got a program now where we're using promotores, these uh, community health workers, mm -hmm. to try and get at uh, an earlier stage of diabetic uh, therapy, so that people uh, don't develop the complications of diabetes, which you know well. Mm -hmm. Eye disease, kidney disease, mm -hmm. heart disease, peripheral vascular disease. And I think that that's an example of a program where uh, there could be an inroad made. But by and large, it comes down to access to care, mm -hmm. 
you don't have access to care, the little things that can go wrong in your life as you age, like your blood pressure goes up. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody's blood pressure tends to rise as you get older, mm -hmm. but you can control it with medicines. This is a treatable issue. And if you treat it, then you avoid all of the complications of higher blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But people can't get, they can't get access. So um, we've expanded our capacity. We've tried to expand our outreach and we welcome, you know, we welcome feedback on how we're doing. We want to be much more available and much more responsive than has been uh, present in the past. So, uh, but you're right. I mean, it's, if you could just, if you could just change the, the cookbook a little bit, if you could just, you if know, you could just do a few things like that, that would make differences in people's lives. And uh, yeah. I'd be looking to you and to your listeners for answers on. Well, I want to tell you something. I'm going to give you a little piece of insight into Tiffany. <laughs> Not that he was desperate for that. Um, <laughs> when we were talking about me having lost 187 pounds, what happened was, what had happened was, <laughs> was that um, when we found out that we were going to be able to, to adopt her, our oldest daughter, I wasn't going to turn her into the woman I was at that moment. And I knew I had to change. In order to do that, I unplugged from television. And I thought that I would unplug from television for three months, six months, and ended up being three and a half years because I was trying to change the ticker tape that runs in one's head. Everybody has a, uh, a narrative <clears throat> that they believe about themselves, about what's happening around them uh, that runs in their head whether they want to or not. You, you're reacting to what you believe. So I had to change what I believe in order to be able to interact with food and people in the appropriate way. And that's how I lost all of that weight. Mm -hmm. um, because I tried everything. I tried uh, weight loss surgery. I tried all of the, the shortcuts, pills. Well, you know, I tried it all. And I knew that uh, I would have to change this, mm -hmm. to change the rest of it. Uh, and I did. But it took three and a half years of no television. We, uh, I was very materialistic at the time. And so we sold everything and gave it. We sold some things and gave everything else away and moved into a, an 800 square foot apartment, five of us, and lived that way to break the materialism with, with no television. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an adventure. <laughs> but I, I said all that to say, uh, it's not as simple as just eating differently. Mm -hmm. Like what you're doing with the promotoras. So that's what changed me. Mm -hmm. And then when I took over TKF, behavioral health became like the thing that, that because I feel like that is what will change our city and our state and our nation is when you take control of your own life and what's going into your body and how you how you feel about what's going into your body mm -hmm. there is an empowerment that is indescribable mm -hmm. it is a, a joy that is indescribable yeah, you feel like you're back back on top again you yeah. you, that you that you can't you know, you're not you're not a slave to this other kind of life that you've had, and, and you uh, can be whoever it is that you can. You, want you can to you be. can recreate yourself. That's right. And uh, and Absolutely. I want to say something before this uh, this segment ends, which is, if, if your listeners had your if they're afflicted with one of these other chronic conditions out there, mm -hmm. 
if I were asked what single thing I would focus on that would make my general health better, if you happen to have been diagnosed with hypertension, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. I would focus on that. And the reason I say that is because if you control your blood pressure in decent levels, mm -hmm. you've gone a long way toward improving your entire health, including your heart's health, mm -hmm. your peripheral vasculature's health, mm -hmm. your brain's health, your mm -hmm. eye's health. And so I'd say to everybody who's listening, if you can just get access, sufficient access to uh, get on the right blood pressure combination. And believe mm -hmm. me, there is a right blood pressure combination that's very, very commonly available uh, for 99% of people. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have done what you can do mm -hmm. with managing the chronic condition that you have. Um, and uh, now the medicines are generic medicines. They're cheap, they're not expensive, and uh, people can People can tolerate them very well, but you have to get to them. You have to find someone who can make this diagnosis, adjust mm -hmm. the medicines for you so they're safe. And once that happens, uh, you can you can be proud of the fact that you've helped yourself. You've really helped yourself. Helped yourself get better. And that's that is a true statement. You have to you have the power to change what's going on in your life. You can do that by doing exactly what Dr. Hammer said, getting the getting on the right blood pressure medicine for you. And, and many people have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I, I had high blood pressure. I had high blood pressure, enlarged heart, diabetes. Uh, even today, I still deal with blood pressure, but I take one-eighth of what I used to take for blood pressure. Um, but so all important. of all of those comorbidities, you can change it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about your health that you can't take control of and have some positive effect on your own life, but it requires that you do something that we don't talk about a lot in this country, and that is you have to take responsibility for what's going into your mouth and just kind of look at yourself and say, okay, these are these are some things that I may be doing wrong, but I can get it right. Mm -hmm. I may have done it wrong 10 seconds ago, I can get it right now. Mm -hmm. So remember that. Don't be your hardest critic. Be your biggest cheerleader. And you, you've got opportunity and places to go that can help you. So let's come back and we've got one more segment with Dr. Henrich, which I'm sad because I, I don't like leaving him, but we're going to talk to him one last bit about a few things that I want to hear about. And you're listening to On the Record with Tiffany.